In my opinion, these days it's nearly impossible to not realize that the sun has a dramatic effect on what happens here on Earth. And I'm not just talking about space weather or the geomagnetic stuff we get from those explosions on the sun. I'm talking about literal weather, thunderstorms, hurricanes, all things that involve our atmosphere, which is what the sun directly affects. And in some cases can even enhance already predicted or forecasted situations when it comes to weather. It's even been said that the alignment of planets in our solar system can affect earthquakes on the surface of the Earth. Take a look at the timing of this planet alignment with the Japan 7.3 earthquake at Fukushima, both taking place on the 16th of March. So I'd like you guys to keep this in mind while we talk about a few current events taking place. We got severe weather about to hit these same areas that were devastated by a tornado outbreak. We have the New York Times talking about an asteroid that's going to come dangerously close to Earth. And we've also got the sun popping off over seven solar flares in a few day period. Two of those that could cause some geomagnetic storms that can very much affect our lives. My friends, it's good to see you all. We're going to break this all down right here, right now. Let's go. Welcome back, everybody. It is Tuesday, March 29th, 2022, and we are going to start with the severe weather forecast that is upcoming in the next two days. In fact, if we backtrack just a little bit here, we could see this is kind of forming beginning overnight tonight. We have that low pressure system just over Iowa, a little bit of South Dakota in there. But what this low pressure system is going to do is basically mimic what we saw just days ago. You can see here that on March 31st is when this expected peak system is going to have dramatic effects on states like Louisiana, Mississippi, Arkansas. Arkansas, Missouri, Kentucky, Tennessee, all these areas within Tornado Alley. That just last week, we had a record-breaking tornado outbreak that included Texas, Oklahoma, Louisiana, almost skipped Arkansas, as you can see here, but then blew back up over Mississippi and then trailed all the way up the southeast to the northeast, the Ohio River Valley. This was a multi-day dangerous situation. This lasted about 53 straight hours, but the amount of tornadoes produced was a record. And now, as you can see, without much time in between, we are dealing with a very similar setup. The low-pressure system up to the north here and what I want you to visualize is the jet stream kind of upflowing this way and then dipping down and then that front edge of the jet stream is coming up right about here so what we have going on is that warm gulf moisture being pulled up straight through Louisiana as you can see all this yellow and orange is the severe aspect of the low pressure system controlling it from up north here and as this system continues its counterclockwise motion it pulls this all up into the southeast Kentucky Tennessee basically the entire Ohio River Valley and unfortunately just like last week torrential downpours, hail, isolated tornadoes, damaging winds. Remember, we had a tornado that involved winds of 160 miles an hour. That specific one taking place in Louisiana. But as you can see, the setup of these two situations seems very similar, very, very similar atmospheric conditions. And we also got to keep in mind, we're not quite into tornado season yet. So to see these storms happening as they are now should at least be enough for people to prepare ahead of time and just understand that this part of the country, which is slowly expanding, needs to really focus on this and stay up to date with when this starts and where it's going to peak out. Beginning either tonight or tomorrow morning, I'll be posting updates in the community section of the YouTube channel and on Twitter. So for those of you looking for updates like that, I'll have them available. I now want to switch gears a little bit and talk about the sun and all the action taking place. As I said in the intro, we've had many, many solar flares in just the last few days alone. Each solar flare is a different strength. They produce a different amount of solar wind. So sometimes these can go almost unnoticed. But once you reach that M class, as you can see on the chart here, that that's when you need to start thinking about this stuff. As the next phase is a geomagnetic storm, which is when solar wind coming off the sun, depending on how strong that solar flare is, can easily affect things here on Earth, such as internet, cell phone service, and an even stronger ones can affect our power grid. So when it comes to a situation like we're in now, and the sun is spitting these things off very close together, these things can actually impact the Earth as a combined force. And that's exactly what you're seeing on your screen now. You're looking at two different CMEs, a coronal mass ejection, those are produced when solar flares are strong enough to actually push that solar wind in a way where it's measured on a graph. And also, as you can see on the charts to the right, these are both expected to hit between the 31st and the 1st of April. Now, keep in mind, that's exactly when the severe peak of the low pressure system and storms coming up through the Gulf are expected to do the most damage. Again, it's been said and studied that the effects of the sun at the right time on our atmosphere can enhance storms. A channel that I promote all the time is Suspicious Observers, and I highly recommend you 
you guys check him out to get even more detail on how the sun actually affects our atmosphere and then in turn the storms and things that happen on the surface. All right, and finally, I'm not trying to keep you here too long. I want to just point this article out to you that was released by the New York Post so you can decide whether or not you want to believe it or not believe it. That's up to you. I want to be very clear in saying that this comet they are talking about more than likely will not hit Earth. But I do find it interesting how they titled this. It says Comet is 16 miles wide and it could be heading towards Earth. So right away, anyone looking at this is going to want to know what this is all about. They basically start the article like this. A comet twice the size of the one that killed the dinosaurs comes dangerously close to Earth every once in a while. Every year, stargazers get out their telescopes with excitement to watch the Presidus meteor shower in July and August. We've talked about that on the channel many times. And the reason for this meteor shower is a comet called Swift Tuttle. According to NASA, Swift Tuttle, officially designated 109P, is a periodic comet that orbits our sun every 133 years. The comet is estimated to have a nucleus of about 16 miles across, twice the size of the comet that they say killed the dinosaurs millions of years ago. Because of Swift Tuttle's very steep orbit around the sun, that contributes to the fact that it moves about 36 miles a second, which they say is about four times faster than that comet that wiped out the dinosaur. And now for the part that people really care about, and that is what are the chances of Swift Tuttle hitting Earth? So as we said, every 133 years, the comet comes several million miles within the Earth's orbit. The last time this happened was in December of 1992. So for most of us here on Earth right now, the next time it comes around in 2126, we're not really going to have to worry about it. But even then, it should only be within about 14.2 million miles of Earth. And they basically say that the only risk we have with this thing right now is that every time the comet enters our inner solar system, there is a chance that one of the gas giant planets, like Saturn, for example, can influence its orbit, possibly putting on a trajectory towards Earth. So it's pretty safe to say as of right now we really don't have to worry about this but in the event that it did happen if the comet were to strike the planet the impact would be about 300 times worse than the dinosaur comet from 65 million years ago in fact there's a funny quote here that just says it would be a very bad day for earth i can't say i disagree all right my friends i want to thank you all for taking the time to watch this video i'll have more details about the weather coming up in the next video whether that's later tonight or tomorrow morning i'll still keep you posted on the community section of the youtube channel Shout out to Canada. I hope you all have a great rest of your day. Take care. Bye-bye. Stop right there, my friends. If you have not already, click that subscribe button and don't forget to hit the bell icon. Click all and you will get all notifications from this channel. And trust me, you won't be disappointed.